G'day viewers, and welcome back. If it's the first time here, welcome. I hope I can teach you something, you like what you see, and consider subscribing. Last time, I started on an old project that I did about two years ago. A DIY trolley for my battery booster. I got it, my, some of it started. This time, the technical stuff. Finishing everything off getting it so I can actually use it and it helps me so again quality is pretty garbage video quality is not great and the audio quality is even worse keep that in mind but still the content's pretty good well I think anyway but what do I know I'm biased <laughs> anyway here we go part two Okay, I've tacked the two two uprights at the top. Right, I'll take those on up here just quickly, just to hold them in place. And I've tacked the bottom one down here just once. Now I'm not really paying attention to measurements on this, like not like precise measurements or anything like that, it's like, yeah, it's close enough. It'll work. Because, I mean, after all, it's it's going to hold a battery booster off the ground. That's all, that's its primary function and its secondary function. Well, the secondary function is to move it easier. Um, so, some measurements are more eh, than others. So, this is one of them. Now, I have those two angles the same. So I want these two angles the same, because you can't see it from there. Turn it around. Hopefully you can see that. It's like that. This is kicked out a bit, so that all of the weight goes to the back, not onto the front. Even when I rotate it, the weight's still kind of going to be on the back, it's not going to be all over the place, and it's, that's just going to make it a bit more manoeuvrable, that's why, also why I've set the, up, the front uprights for the back from the axle. I could have even done better and turned the whole thing around the other way and have it set right back from the axle, but yeah, this is good enough. That'll make it too much of a, you get to a certain point and it'll just tip on you. <coughs> so... Now I need to get a somewhat close accurate measurement on this distance here. So that's at two fifteen thereabouts. So that's gotta come in about five more which I'm actually going to measure that with this on the inside. That's about it. Let's move it in just a tiny bit. That's about it there. So I'm just quickly going to tack that in place. Now, before you ask, yes, these two are exactly the same length. So now that I know, now I know that. The distance is the same, so the distance from top to bottom is going to be the same, and the angle on the two is going to be the same. I can verify that, but I'm not really that worried about it. Okay, so I've just been doing a bit of trial and fitting and fidgeting, and I've pretty much come up with, I want the rear height to be about there. Which you can't see for some reason. Yeah, no, there you can. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend these legs. Well, not bend them. I'm going to cut and join 
these legs so that they're on an angle and they come down to the base, the, the floor basically. And the wheels are on as you can see and that gives me my height. Um, don't want to go any more than that because the further up I go with the weight on the top of it, it, it tends to tip forward. Um, this way it, it tends to tip back, uh, which is what we want. Um, so I've got a bit of measuring and marking to do and I'll come back to you. Okay. I've been in trial and a couple of little things. Pretty much determine 30 degrees. Yeah, it looks good. And it's an even number. I mean, I could go up to 45 degrees, but that's just getting a bit ridiculous. The smaller the angle, the further back the foot's going to sit, which is what I want. So, 30 degrees. It's easily split. 15, 15, 30. I'll get to that in a sec. So, now what I have to do is I have to cut here <coughs> to turn that, or bend that, to 30 degrees. Now, you can't just cut a 15, a 30 degree wedge out of there. Because, okay, this is a bit more exaggerated. That's a 45 degree cut. And that's a 90 degree cut. So if I cut 45 degrees off one piece and leave the other one at 90, end up with that. You see that? That whole area there is just not. It's just so, to cut an angle into a piece of metal, you need to cut even this one, it's not 45, but you get the general idea, it's, it's getting closer. So you need to cut the same amount out of each side. So if you want a 30 degree angle, you need to cut 15 degrees off each side. That way, it ends up the same size. Give me a minute, I'll show you. Okay, now here's my bevel set at 30 degrees, which is the overall angle that I was looking for. Alright, so that's that's what we have to match up to. That has to come down to there. Now, as I mentioned, if I just cut 30 degrees out of there, I'm going to end up with something that kind of looks like that. Don't want that. So, set your bevel at 15 degrees. Now, how do you know 15 degrees? Well, the easy way, I downloaded and printed this out years ago. Well, you can get them off the internet, you just, just search protractor, printable protractor, and you can see how fine them are, like up here. They're not that fine, they're like nearly 2 mil between each, each angle each degree. So, follow it all on the bottom line there. If you have a straight edge bench, that's great because then you can just fold that over a straight edge, whack that up against there, you're good. If you don't, well, you're just going to have to do it close enough, but set the base across there, set that mark there, and there you go. Pretty simple, huh? Free. So, as you just saw, this little bell is set at 15 degrees. So, what I did was I found a common mark a little bit behind these posts, measured it from the absolute front on both sides, so they're both the same, duh. Set this at 15 degrees, and on your square line, well, scribe it, turn it over, there's 15 degrees there. Boom. So total included angle there is 30 degrees. We would hope. So now, I hope you can see that. I've cut that section out on both legs. This one back here is done too. Now, let's spin this down and see what happens. Okay, so it's cut a bit big, but that's no problem at all. There's 30 degrees. Well, what do you know? Both the edges here line up. 
they're both at the same point. You haven't got one overhanging the other. So I can just tap, I can just weld that now and we're good. Now, one other thing, notice I didn't cut right through, I only cut a V out of it. I left the top edge up here intact. So I can just bend it. I don't <laughs> it's still there, it's hanging there by itself. Because I left this edge intact. Now, one thing that can go wrong with that is if you don't cut back up into the same place on both sides, you end up with this. You see that's just a little bit off. It's not quite, not, they don't quite match. I'm not sure if you can actually see that on the camera. But yeah, they're, they're slightly off. Maybe I can exaggerate that a little bit. There we go, see that? No, you still can't. Have a, um, no. There we go. See? It's not a straight line. How do you fix that? Now, you can use a pipe wrench, you can use slip pliers, I prefer adjustable wrench, crescent wrench, whatever the hell you want to call it. Stick it on there like that. Give it a twist. Those are now lined up. There you go, now you can mold it. And it's all straight. It's all flush. Now comes the interesting part. Now I need to mark a line where to cut these off so that they're the right angle so they sit flat on the on the ground. Now I could do a whole bunch of measurements and maths and all the rest of it. Nah, it's a simple way. That's the spacer I used to determine how far off the ground I want it. So, I'm going to put that back in place. Plant that somehow. That right there will live. Now, you see I've let that dangle down a bit. Look, I want that angle close, I want that point close to this point because that's where I measured it. Now, <coughs> you just get another straight edge. On the wheel, now you can see that on the on the wheel, on there, there's your line. So easy. And once you've marked your line, you take this part, get your bezel. Do that. You don't have a straight edge long enough. Well, we'll do it backwards for now. Grab your bezel and after all, it's still going to be there when you mark it. Set your bezel to that angle. And there you go. Should be good. Now you can use that to mark the other one after you take a measurement. Because obviously you want them the same length, right? You may notice again here, I didn't cut the whole thing off. I cut like a wedge out of it. What's this for? Now you can close off that foot. It's not going to sink into the ground. I said earlier that when you when you do all this cutting and all that measuring, you can do it a number of ways. <coughs> you can measure and fill around with everything like that. But if your measurements aren't the same all over, that's going to be out. So you could set up the same way I marked this one. Again, it could work, but getting it exactly the same, that's not going to be easy because the angle of the the uh, bar I had on here, 
Well, if it's at a different spot, well, it's going to change, isn't it? Only minutely, but it's still going to change. Another way to do it, get your two wheels set on there, that corner on the base, that's the height you need. Now, don't forget the thickness of the metal. So you've got to cut that much off too. I just happen to have some metal the same thickness. It's pretty simple. Stick that there. Scrub on the scrub. It's on the scrub. It's alright. It's, right. it's around here. It's probably buried under this stuff. It could be the HSS. It's got a sharp edge on it. So we'll just use that. Just Okay. And you guys were probably saying, it's right there! I couldn't see it underneath. <laughs> so, what do I do? That one's all done. And I cut this one and folded it, but I haven't welded it. Well, okay. Honesty, yeah, I did. That was the first one I did. And then I did this one, I marked this one off, off the bench, and cut all this and put it all up. Oh, well, hang on a sec, why is it rocking so bad? Um, I'm not sure, but I think it might have something to do with this. Yeah, there's a massive gap there. Which means the bench isn't square, the bench isn't straight. So when I've put one foot here, it's actually been sitting lower than this one here. <sighs> you get the idea. So I ended up having to cut another 5mm out of here. And now before I weld it, I've steadied it. Sat it on the, on the three legs. Two wheels on one leg. And basically just put some weight, put some pressure on it. Until it came down to the right height. Now I just tack that in place. Good to go. I did a bit of playing around with the handle and I just, I had them cut already, so I just thought, well, what's it going to be like, this thing? Turns out, it's a nice comfy height. And, carry mode, well, it's, okay, it's a little bit opposite to ergonomic. I might actually straighten that angle out a bit, but it's comfortable. Let's put it that way, and yeah, I'm thinking I might just bring that back around a bit, so it's a bit more ergonomic, so I'll you rinse it that way. So, apart from welding everything up, I still want to make that some sort of, something to secure the, something to secure the uh, booster onto the trolley itself. I also want to make the point where that can just go in the water, plug it in, well, done. One of the easiest ways to straighten out a, a, an angle like this, take, you take to it with your grinder and a cutting disc, cut slots in it, and when you've cut the slots, just pull it up. If, that ang if the angle's not far enough, just keep cutting into the slots until you get the desired angle. Now for me, yeah, that could probably come up a little bit more. Sorry you couldn't see that, I'm a bit quiet. So I'm going to take a few more cuts out of this and see how far I can get. Oh, that's a bit better. That's nice and comfortable like that. Now, <coughs> You can, you can just take pieces out like I've done here, and you take three cuts, or to make it look, as you can see, not more, as you can see it's sort of not real natural, the more cuts you take, the more natural it'll roll. Not that that matter, I've, cosmetics isn't a, pro, isn't a thing with this. Just saying, if you want a more natural curve, cut into it. 
put more slots into it, it'll look more natural. Let's see if I can show you what I mean on something else. There's another project I've been working on for about a year. I will get back to it one day. But if you have a look, like that bar there. This, nice and smooth and natural look out there. This was made the same as what I just showed you over there. I made a series of cuts in a straight pipe and then curled them around and that's the result. And if you think it was a one-off fluke, I did the same on the other side. It's getting a bit hard to see here now. That one's actually not as smooth, but you get the general idea. So, two pipes that were straight, that are now at a 45 degree angle. No, that's not 45, that's more like a 30. <coughs> Just by it simply cutting slits out. And the more natural way to, the way to get that more natural look is, as I said, along the trolley, Three cuts. It's three cuts, and they're pretty far apart. They're about half an inch apart each. Half inch, twelve mil. Call it what you want. If I made them, only because, well, I didn't really, didn't really care, to be honest. Um, to get that looking more, more natural, well, all you need to do. Just make the cuts closer together and more of them. That's the way I did it on the on the mini bike I just showed you. More cuts closer together, not like on top of each other. As I said, they're like half half an inch, half an inch, twelve mil, somewhere around there apart. If you make them five or six mil apart, it's gonna get it's gonna have more of a natural line to it. Well that's that. And here it is, two years later, haven't done a thing to it, haven't even welded it up. Which is probably a good thing because over the last two years I've noticed when you're pulling it, it is a bit top heavy. So, which obviously puts a lot of weight on the, on the handle. So, I'm going to lower it a bit. Not today. And see how that goes. But, until then, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below if you like what you saw and you learnt something, hit that like button and the subscribe button and notification bell so you know when the next one's coming and I'll see you on the next one.